Okay, so in a chemistry course, you're going to look at the, a whole periodic table, uh, learning all about the elements. But in a biology course, there's really only a few elements that you um, need to focus in on, uh, but we do need to know some of the chemistry of those particular elements so that we could build the biological molecules and then see how they behave in cells. So um, we're going to look at atoms and a really simplistic atomic structure for a few elements. And so the elements we're looking at here are the elements that make up uh, most of the biological molecules. So uh, probably about 96% of the biological molecules are made up primarily of just these four elements. Okay, uh, Hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. Phosphorus and sulfur will push that up uh, to a little bit higher percentage. Uh, and then we have a lot of trace elements that we, once we get to like 98, 99%, and that last percent is there's a number of other elements there. But this really is the bulk of the molecule. So whether we're talking about lipids, carbohydrates, amino acids, nucleic acids, uh, we're mostly going to be focused on these. So you need to be familiar with them and how they behave and how they interact with each other. So first off, we're going to look at how we define an element. Right? So an atom is the smallest particle of matter and it's composed of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Now it's the number of protons, number of protons, that are going to define each atom as a particular element, right? And that's coming from what was referred to as the atomic number. So for atomic number, hydrogen is an atomic number of one, that means one proton. Uh, carbon, an atomic number of six, six protons, and then nitrogen seven, and oxygen eight. Okay, so these, in the periodic table, these three are, are kind of right next to each other. Hydrogen's uh, up by itself. So to draw biological molecules, which you'll ultimately need to do, carbohydrates, lipids, amino acids, and so on, we need to look at these particular elements and find out how they bond with each other. So if we're going to look at how they bond together, what we have to do is look at how, the, how many electrons they have, how the electrons interact. But here we're saying we're talking about protons. Typically, the, the number of protons uh, is usually equal, so usually equals the number of electrons. And so for our purposes, what we are going to focus in on mostly are the electrons. Right? So for hydrogen, we'll start off with this. It, it's the most um, simple of the uh, elements here. It has one proton, and so this is hydrogen, no neutrons. And then it has a single electron orbiting that uh, proton. And it's not in a perfect orbit like this. Um, this is what we're going to call uh, an electron shell over here. Uh, and these are also representative of energy levels. So in this first shell, uh, hydrogen has one electron and a first shell like this is full with two electrons. That means it can hold one more electron before it's full. And that's going to be why elements bond with other elements is because they're trying to fill this outer shell with electrons. So hydrogen needs one more, which means it can form one bond. Just one. It's not going to form two bonds or three bonds. It's only going to form one bond because it needs the one electron. And this is going to be the same as we go through these other elements here. So carbon, we're going to have uh, it's six protons. It also has six neutrons here in the nucleus, but we're going to kind of leave them out. If it has different numbers of electrons, it would still be the same element, but it would be an ion. And if it has different numbers of neutrons, it would be an isotope, but still the same element. But if the number of protons were to change, it would then become a different element. So. Uh, the protons is, are the, the thing that fixes the characteristic uh, of this particular element, or of all elements. So now there's going to be six electrons, six protons, six electrons. So we start to put these into the, the first shell. There's one, two, and now that's full, full with two electrons. So the other four have to go into a second shell. So a second shell is full with eight electrons, but carbon here is going to have four electrons, right? Because there's, it has six total, there's two, three, four, five, 
six, that would be six electrons. Now, it needs four more, so it can form four bonds. Because you can get one, two, three, four more electrons to fill out that shell, so it can form four bonds, and it will form four bonds. It's not going to form just you know, three or two or five. It's going to form four bonds. Nitrogen, kind of go through this here. You should be able to then draw these in the end yourself. Um, same thing, we're going to have seven. Seven protons, and then we just kind of add, add another. So we go one, two, got uh, two electrons in the first shell, one, two, three, four in the second shell, but then it's going to be a, a fifth one. Right? So for this one, it has, and we're just talking about the outer shell here, the outermost shell, uh, that has five electrons in the outer shell. So it can form three bonds. So that's for nitrogen. So we got that's hydrogen here. This is carbon. Here we have nitrogen. And then lastly, we'll do oxygen. Oxygen has its eight protons and eight neutrons also. But we're just not putting them in. Two electrons in its first shell. And then one, two, three, four, and then five, six electrons in the outer shell. So it needs two more, so it can form two bonds. This is going to be important as we draw some of the different biological molecules. Say, for example, when we draw a water molecule, so a water molecule is going to have uh, oxygen which in its outer shell has one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. A hydrogen has one electron in its outer shell. So they can form a bond here where they share electrons. Now for that hydrogen, it's full, it's done, it only needed one, it has one, it's over with. This oxygen could still use one more electron. So if we had a second hydrogen with a second electron, now the oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Each of the hydrogens have two for them. And so this would fill their shells and that's how the bonding would be created. So that's kind of the next step beyond this is start to, starting to build different types of biological molecules using primarily these elements. So your first step is become familiar with their atomic numbers. Secondly, put the electrons in the shells um, and then know how many bonds those particular elements can form. And as we draw the other molecules, you'll be able to start to put them together and count if they have the proper number of bonds.